before the election. Again, Cohen saying that he did this on behalf of and that the direction of and in coordination with a candidate for federal office, that person unnamed. Just heard from Rudy Giuliani a second ago about all of this because people are talking about, well, there's now a connection between these payments and President Trump. Giuliani saying in a statement to Fox News, quote, there is no allegation of any wrongdoing against the president in the government's charges against Mr. Cohen. It is clear, as the prosecutor noted, Mr. Mr. Cohen's actions reflect the pattern of lies and dishonesty over a significant period of time. It doesn't look like the special prosecutor or the Southern District of New York will have much of an, an axe to hold over Michael Cohen's head because he and his attorneys have agreed to sentencing, which will run somewhere between uh, three and a half and six years. So, Brett, it, it looks like uh, that that part of the case may be over in terms of Michael Cohen. But now we'll have to start pulling on the threads of this federal candidate directing and working with Cohen to make these payments to affect the outcome of the election. That could be the most problematic part here. For the yeah, John, quickly, you know, we heard the president uh, address the Manafort development, but not the Cohen no. development. Do, do we expect that that's going to stick tonight as he's in West Virginia? Yeah, I mean, you never know. At these campaign events, the president uh, could say anything. And, uh, you know, looking at the statement that we got from Rudy Giuliani, that may be the direction that the president goes in, that there's no allegation of any wrongdoing against the president in these charges against Michael Cohen. We'll find out, and we'll find out soon. Brett. Yes, we will. John Roberts, live on the North Lawn. John, thanks. Now to the Manafort verdict. Jurors said guilty to eight counts and could not reach agreement on ten others. Correspondent Peter Ducey, once again, outside the federal courthouse in Alexandria, Virginia. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Brett. Paul Manafort sat stone face in a courtroom on the ninth floor as the judge announced he was guilty on eight counts and that a mistrial had been declared on ten others. This all unfolded after a late afternoon note from the jury room to the bench where jurors wrote, after exhausting all options, we have reached a verdict. We are not able to reach consensus on 10 of the counts. The judge then invited the jury who deliberated for four days into the court and asked all 12 jurors one at a time if it was ever going to be possible for them to come to any kind of consensus on those 10 outstanding charges and one at a time. They all said no, no chance of agreement in the jury room on the remaining bank and tax fraud charges. Now, the Manafort legal team is plotting their next move. Mr. Manafort is disappointed of not getting acquittals all the way through or a complete hung jury on all counts. However, he would like to thank Judge Ellis for granting him a fair trial, thank the jury for their very long and hard fought deliberations, he is evaluating all of his options at this point. The judge, T.S. Ellis, revealed at the end of last week that he'd been threatened as a result of his role presiding over this case. That's why he denied a motion by a handful of news outlets who wanted the jurors' names unsealed before the end of the trial. And before dismissing the jury for the last time, just before 5 p.m. here in Alexandria, the judge urged them not to talk to reporters because he wants to protect the deliberative process. And if jurors don't talk to the press, it will be tough to tell who they are and what happened in the jury room because Judge Ellis just said, I have ordered that your names remain under seal. The Mueller team now has until August 29th to decide what they want to do about those 10 outstanding charges that resulted in mistrials and whether or not they will retry them. And that's not all that Paul Manafort has on the horizon. He still faces federal charges in a federal court in Washington, D.C., and that trial begins next month. Brett. Peter Ducey outside the courthouse. Peter, thank you. If those two stories were not enough today, the special counsel team once again taking steps to delay the sentencing hearing for former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. This happened once before at the end of June. Flynn pleaded guilty to lying to investigators. He was fired for lying to the vice president about contacts with Russian officials. Flynn has been cooperating with the special counsel probe. A lot of reading into what the delay possibly could mean or not. Let's get some analysis on all of this 
today, a lot of it. George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley joins us this evening, along with Fox News chief legal correspondent and host of Fox News at Night, Shannon Bream. Uh, thank you both. Jonathan, I want to start with the Cohen case. And these are the charges, the guilty pleas, uh, five counts of tax evasion, one count of making a false statement to a financial institution, one count of willfully causing an unlawful corporate contribution, one count of making an excessive campaign contribution. The most potentially damaging legally politically is that campaign violent uh finance violation. Absolutely. I mean, unless this unidentified candidate is Bernie Sanders, it's going to be bad news. I mean, or you're not paying attention. Because if, if the prosecutors accept what is in this indictment, then the president just became an unindicted co-conspirator. That's, th that's the simple matter of it. I mean, if, if they believe that what's in this indictment is true and that he was directed to make this payment, they clearly believe the payment was a campaign finance violation, then the president just became an unindicted co-conspirator. And he could be become an indicted co-conspirator depending on the timing and circumstances. Now that's enough to concentrate the mind of any White House lawyer. Uh, this is far more dangerous than what happened with Manafort. The president's right. It's completely separate in that case from him. Cohen is not. Yeah, Shannon, this deals with the payments uh, to adult film star uh, Stormy Dandel Daniels and ex-Playboy model uh, Karen McDougal uh, that Cohen made before the election. Uh, there will be people, uh, there are already out there, arguing that this is not a violation of campaign finance laws. The prosecutor is saying differently. Yeah, I think it's interesting that in this we have a decision by Michael Cohen that he is going to lay out everything that he confesses to in this information and that they've negotiated, pre-negotiated this range uh, of essential for him possibly um, but it's interesting that he has said that he's not going to cooperate that wasn't part of this deal that he would cooperate with prosecutors there are many people who say he's actually protecting the president by m not having a big public trial over this even though it may only have gotten him in criminal trouble uh, they say that even though the president may feel a little bit stunned and burned by this today actually Cohen keeping this private and agreeing not to help prosecutors is actually a bit of a win for the president I want to play two sound bites one is the president on Air Force One being asked about these payments and then Rudy Giuliani talking about paying back Cohen one after the other. Having something to do with paying some Stormy Daniels woman, 130,000. I mean, which is going to turn out to be perfectly legal. That money was not campaign money. Sorry, I'm giving you a fact now that you don't know. It's not campaign money. No campaign finance violation. So, so they, they funneled it through the law firm. Funneled through the law firm, and the president repaid it. Oh, I didn't know he did. Yeah. There's no campaign finance law. Zero. So is that the battle line that will be drawn here, Jonathan? It is. I mean, first of all, it's important to keep three things in mind. One is the president's not actually named as an as unindicted co-conspirator, but under the facts, it implicates him. Second, Michael Cohen is a perfectly dreadful witness for any fact witness. He has a bad history in terms of statements that he has made. And then third, the defense is, in fact, the definition of the crime. Now, one thing I think to keep in, in mind here is that this has always been a controversial area. They brought these charges against John Edwards and it failed in court. Now they did not have someone like Cohen who is saying that I made these payments intentionally with the motivation of influencing the election at the behest of the candidate. That makes it a stronger case than Edwards. But this has always been very controversial as to the motivation. Is it really to influence the election as Cohen says or is it more because he's a married for Mueller. Manafort can't go to jail for 10 years. He's an older guy. If he wants a deal, he wants a walk away. And that means a pardon. And only one guy can give that to him. And it doesn't, there's no indication that Manafort is changing from that strategy. 
All right, when Michael Cohen, uh, Lanny Davis, just moments ago, uh, issued a statement. This is Michael Cohen's attorney saying, quote, Michael Cohen took this step today so that his family can move on to the next chapter. This is Michael fulfilling his promise made on July 2nd to put his family.